dear. This letter will be presented in halves, though this will only be perceptible after the fact. Both halves are from you, if you like. Though not halves, more accurately we say hemispheres. The hemispheres of a blasted second or third moon orbiting some bloated planet. Or the halved brain clamouring at the door to get in. Or squatting in the dark in the loft, forgotten. Cool phlegm amid the dust. Or on the black back lawn at night in the drizzle, forgotten. You no longer forget. You imagine. Worst kind of forgetting to only imagine. Now I'm at your room. This bifurcated moon arid, equatorial separation, a literal polarity. The two halves of this moon infinitely intimate somewhere near the lipped midriff, a Gobi or Saharan midriff. We talk about the difficulty of picturing things that really should be understood as wet, as malleable, like cephalopods fucking or that transparent second set of eyelids which are in actual fact bone dry, brittle, precarious in their completeness. As in, holding onto the form and the form of the other by the skin of the teeth, on the cusp of complete disintegration, chafing against one another, ice cold embers of our form drifting upwards from the fire to confuse the scale of a billion year constellation. Picture us together in love or something. I think that walls can help. There is a desire here from both of us, I hope, to finally put to rest those duplicitous terms I feel we've been stymied by for so fucking long. Close. Intimate, contiguous, imminent, you're getting warm. The technocratic proximate, the archaic overblown propinquity, together. A thesaurus of words that, while describing how I might be closer to you than I am distant, whatever that means, Nevertheless, report our separation. In the final estimation, polarized. The repulsion of two, two fleshy magnets back to back. Fleshy, but nowadays scaled, crisped, by the back of the sun's face, which is of course terrifically cold, represented here by sprawling negative numbers. Degrees beneath degrees. Beneath, beneath long divisional lines, some new, banally originated term of measurement in use. It's devising a consequence of reaching the limit of a prior standard. A cold, dead, snake-like sibling for Kelvin, for Celsius. The apologists of Fahrenheit, the patron saint of sprained frenulum linguae, that thin, purpled muscle connecting the tongue to the bed of the mouth where you and I both have buried hundreds of those metal tips of thermometers. I'll steal. This cold being one of a suit of environmental factors that have been suggested as aggravating to this skin condition I suffer from. The list also including stress, depression, perhaps by that fat thumb or the terrible three fingers that shift between dimensions, etc. Withdrawal of systemic corticosteroid, some form of feng shui of the internal organs, etc. Few have shown statistical significance, so we turn to the advice of quacks and tabloid scientists and wolf down great handfuls of blueberries and drink pots and pots of green tea. Subsequently, you're in and out of the downstairs toilet a lot. We've noticed, of course. I would say because we care, but I can't really say that with any conviction. 
Conviction, I'm afraid, is reserved for abuse. Over there, the lure of the parent planet, attracting and repulsing our intimate, clinched beings for its own conceit. Tides, night, light, some forms of beauty, lunacy even, especially, derived from our distant apprehension. While up here at the source, in the silence, we are, I think, essentially bloodless and essentially motionless, transfixed. The only movement you and I experience being the direct result of a larger object's whims. I was mistaken. So, accordingly, you quietly describe value here being relative to weight, to girth, to height, to wingspan, etc. Characteristics of material provenance being shifted back towards some sort of fundamental taxonomic schema where, truthfully, you say, there is finally some sort of decency in evidence. A democracy of objects based not upon their marketability but upon a heady combination of their volumetric aspect concerning their gravitational faculty, the sun superseding Mercury, for example, the supermassive black hole tucked beneath the Ryan's belt buckle, superseding every other item in the galaxy, for example, and their conceptual sphere of influence. This kind of deferential behaviour fools no one. The entire cast of a Bresson film, inscrutable and simultaneously, miraculously, utterly clear, opened, gaped, Interpolated by us, the holes in search of boundaries. You and I both understand them. They're frigid faces. No, I... You proceed to describe a film in which models from Bresson's company perform as the 66 natural satellites of Jupiter. Jupiter being something like a central bank, or a river, or a castle, or a farmhouse. The satellites wander, impassive, to veil desperation, around Jupiter, coming into contact just with one another. The lightest kiss, the slightest graze of a hand on a forearm, the warm or cold depression made by a gaze, though it would be more accurate to call such a gaze a reflection, nothing behind there as in no source to outward movement, at least nothing we could describe as being for or at you. Each face turned toward us for our inspection, though really it's hard to look for long at or into these gathered moons, simply depressions, concave mirrors, reflecting our own unresponsive faces in grotesquely impassioned, perverted expressions. Empathetic crumplings of brows, flirtatious pouts, encouraging smiles. Warmth, living plumpness, molten glass mid-blowing, basically. This hall of mirrors, stalking the film set. We turn each round in turn to gaze into the mirrored bowl at our lacking selves, serving simply to ape our emotional coherence. A certain lexicon of gestures, infinitely evolved from those contemporary touchscreen swipes, pokes, smears, dismissals you're fluent in. We eventually worked out how to leave a trace on these impervious surfaces, as in how to depress them. Troughs ploughed while dismissing through photos, or sacking or deposing through the internet. Eventually, that flaccid median of liking everything and any concomitant infantile nicety are eroded, or rather collapsed into passionate, urgent, violent opposition. I'll steal. An archive of digital photographs of complicated textures, 
only available online. Rifling through these swatches of glass paper, birch bark, barren riverbeds, goose-bumped forearm, slicked genitals, flaking gloss paint, clammy palms, flicking and curling past in exaggerated computer representation. The phantasm of a book and the phantasm of a hand they would either pole the real thing. We hold hands, fingers interlaced and clenched, confused, bald. Spheres both, you say. The spheroid a consequence of an object's gravitational lure upon itself. Its reflexive attraction. A kind of narcissistic physics. Black holes forming as a consequence of a superabundance of ego. The black hole's self-love, its penetrative gaze being gamely accommodated by its own gaping and amply lubricated sockets. The result being a perpetual bind of penetration and reception. Field of movement, narcissistic gravitational heft so terrifically powerful that nothing within its field of influence can escape. Hence, a deep melancholy within the whole. Still, we hold on to one another, willing spontaneous synthesis to occur. We can never be close enough, you and I. There is always some barrier, however imperceptible. An illusion of penetration. A at no point do you make it through to the other side which would presumably necessitate one of us submitting to becoming a whole, defined, contained by the other whom one would wholly interpolate. The quandary being ontological here, at least initially, how can I be if I am defined as an absence within you? Hemmed by you, you define my perimeter. Fucker. Without you, I I would yawn apart, lacking edges, skin, slickening substances. I am nothing. A hole without a brink is nothing. Which returns you to your terrible, insurmountable proximity with renewed resignation. A renewal of its abject necessity. Definition, noun, adjective, etc. Slump, fuck it. Sweetly buried in your yellow hair. A never ending, terrifically chapped kiss. The two hemispheres of this thing kissing, passionately, though not without a certain reticence. A reticence echoing backwards from some inevitable finitude in the future. Kissing at the widest point. Four vast lips depressing one another. Attempted coalescence through the desperate application of terrific pressure. The upshot being a kind of continental lilo scored with industrial applique, dividing the cushions of lipids, blood, sex. Satisfied enough to dream. This is an attempt to speak of depression. To speak as depressions. For speech words, etc., to depress. A coincidence of forms to depress. A critique of depressions also, if I say so. To speak of depressions from within depressions, from the wet floor of depressions, looking up at a blurred chink of grey light. An echo in here that serves to plot the internal walls of the depression. A sorry parody comes drifting back. <laughs> I don't sound like that, do I? Conveyed from this narrow black bed at the bottom of depressions, this narrow black wet bed, ceiling above which are text into complicated symbols that denote the more familiar constellations, only rendered absurd, properly alien, by this dislocation beneath the skin of a moon a few light years away, but within the same solar system. Feel 
the canyon floor, or skulking in depressions entrenched. A perspective afforded of a cross-section of the topsoil, roots, worms, nests, bones, dense clay, inorganic multicolored misc, where a kind of rancid milk flows, or a kind of tar or crude exhumed from the crevasse. This then delivered with a chasmically depressed expression on the face, all protrusive aspects having subsided. Over years, perhaps, the depressed index, dumb scorings, brute incisions, made using blunted instruments, a pair of those dulled, snub-nosed metal scissors to suit stumped, inelegant fingers, merely depressing the sheet of blue card. As in the depression in the pillow, the mattress, the depression of eyeballs through eyelids with heels of hands, they give, slightly, with a spraining ache, an expression of a transparent humour, or tears, of course. <laughs> They say things will get better. All I know is, they fucking better. 